today we'll take a look at um, Rhapsody models uh, inside LaTeX. So the view that you're looking at right now is, uh, is, a, is a UML model that has been loaded into IBM Rational Rhapsody. And on the left hand side you can see that these are the various model components. You'll recognize things like sequence diagrams and use case diagrams and object model diagrams, but you'll also see things like packages where if you expand packages then it's got its sub packages and we can keep expanding down and you can see that there are classes here and in fact you can put other types of diagrams and other elements inside these packages so this is a listing of list of all the elements that are inside it we'll take a look at the same thing inside latex and we'll focus in on the from the perspective of how do these things interrelate with each other and what does it tell us about architecture? So let's take a look at, um, we'll start up uh, uh, Ladix Architect and we'll create a new project. So we'll start a new project and let's go over the, skip the profiles uh, dialog and then choose the module type. And you can see that all the different module types are listed and the one we care about is UML, SysML based on Rhapsody. And then we navigate to the directory where the Rhapsody model is located, and there it is. That's our homealarm.rpy, and you can select that. By the way, you can also auto-connect, which means you can directly connect if your Rhapsody happens to be running to take the active project that's already there. But we'll just use the file that contains the Rhapsody model right now, and we'll start the project going. Great, so we connected to the Rhapsody model. And now we have loaded that model into Latex. And let's create a view on it. And let's create a dependency structure matrix view. So I'll click on that link. And here it is. We have a DSM. Uh, and let's expand it so we can see some of the elements inside it. And now you can see that we're seeing the same elements that happen to be there in Rhapsody. So you can see there are components, there's object model diagrams, there are packages, there are sequence diagrams, and use case diagrams. And here are the dependencies that those elements have on each other. So we can see that components depends on packages with a strength of 46, object model diagrams depend on packages with a strength of six, and so on. And now let me expand my packages. So here I am, and I can see the different packages, alarm package, analysis package, GUI package, and hardware package, and now I have relationships between them that I can also see. And, uh, uh, and in fact, if we open up the usage pane, uh, then we can begin to examine these dependencies. So we can see that hardware package depends on alarm package with a strength of 30. And uh, you can see that there are dependencies. So between these classes, between various elements, uh, before I get into it, let us just apply partitioning to it. So it'll give us an architectural sense about how these packages interrelate with each other. So I select packages, and I'm gonna apply the component partitioner to it. So here it is, I've applied component partitioner, and what does it show me? It shows me a layered view of these packages, actually. So analysis package sits on top of the GUI package, which then in turn sits on top of hardware package and alarm package. And the thing that draws my attention right away is that hardware package and alarm package are actually coupled to each other. And that's, that's typically what happens when you build write code, and that's what happens when you actually build models too. So let's look at those same 30, the 30 dependencies of hardware package to alarm package, and you can see uh, that there are different classes that depend on other types and classes inside alarm package. If you wanted to see, for instance, there is, the, there is a hardware pole class, and you'll see that that hardware pole class in hardware package depends on certain types that have been defined inside alarm package. Um, look at the reverse side now. So let's look at alarm package and look at its dependency on hardware package. And you'll see that alarm controller, for instance, has a dependency on the iHardware interface. Uh, in fact, you can also see there are sequence diagrams which have dependencies on the on the different elements of, uh, of hardware package. And this is an interesting one for me because not just code, but you can see that when we create these diagrams, we're actually introducing 
uh, cycles or dependencies between them and if we were to then implement any of these diagrams in code at some point uh, then we would end up introducing those same cycles that exist in code and end up with the same situation which makes code so hard to maintain it's the unwanted couplings or the undesirable couplings that have been created in our code often because they have been misplaced uh, and often because we haven't bothered to define interfaces uh, and inverted our dependencies. So this is a good quick view of how you can take a set of elements which are listed in some uh, in, in, in a table uh, with, with their interrelationships but now we can get a view of how these interrelationships impinge on the architecture.